hope in Jesus will never fail. The hope that we get from the Lord, it will, it will stay with us. It will endure. It will endure. It will never fade no matter what happens, no matter what comes our way. If we continue to place our hope in Jesus, hallelujah, we will end up in a good place, in a solid, solid place. We will be on solid ground. We're going to look to our scripture this morning. It's coming from Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. I know it's a very familiar scripture. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I am convinced that, that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. And I'll say it. There's no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, yeah. his passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Hallelujah. There is nothing, nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you glory. Father, we just stand in a posture of worship this morning, oh God. Jesus, we stand in a posture of worship this morning, oh God, just giving you our hearts. Lord, basking in the fact that you love us more than we could ever know. Father, there is so much power in your love, oh God, and we receive your love this morning, oh God. That is our prayer this morning, that as, as we're worshiping, as we're using these songs just as tools as we connect in your presence, that we will just be fully aware of the fact that we are loved beyond comprehension. That we are speaking and communing with a God who knew us before he formed the earth, oh God. That you knew us before we even spoke a word, before we even took our first breath. You knew that you knew what we would do. You knew what we would say. You knew what or where we would go. And yet you loved us. You said, they are mine. He's mine. She's mine. And I love them. Nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. God tells us that we are worth it. We are worth every everything that he endured for us. We are worth it. In the moments when you feel that you are worthless, know that you are worth so much. You are worth the very blood of our Savior. You are worth it. And you are loved and you are treasured and God is pulling you close to him. Father, we thank you for the love that is in your presence. There is no God like our God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. What is this love that won't relent? That's calling out with heaven's breath. Who's reaching wide to save our souls? Only you. This grace that makes no sense that we could never recompense who gives us all a second chance only you only you only you
back to you, God. He would bring us all back to you. I thank you, thank you for the gospel of your love. I thank you, Lord, that you came for all of us. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that through you and in you we can stand. I thank you that through you and in you we can continue walking. We can press thank you that through you and in you, there is nothing that would keep us from you, nothing that we can't do. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you are the very hope that's in us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, you left nothing to chance. You knew that we would have moments when we were weak, moments when we we thought it was the end, but you gave us your Holy Spirit to remind us, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep pressing. Keep praying. Keep reading. Keep pushing. Don't give up. Don't give up. I'm with you. I'm inside of you. I'm in your heart. I'm in your mind. I'm surrounding you. I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit which draws us back to you. I thank you, Lord, that you are a God that left nothing to chance. You gave us everything that we would possibly need to serve you and to love you and to live a life for your kingdom. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name, oh God. Jesus, we give you our praise right back. We pour it out right back to you.
there are so many reasons why you're great. You could call out those things, God, days upon end and never reach the extent of your greatness, God. You're faithful, you're loving, you're righteous, you're just, you're holy. Just to name a few, God, you are so great. And you are the source of our life the source of our strength and our hope and our peace and our joy. And so today, God, we come, we come to you, God, now in prayer. God, and I pray especially for those who may be listening and watching in other places around this world. God, and they're in the middle of experiencing something, God, and they, they need you to be great again. God, I pray for their hope. I pray for their faith. God, to be placed in you alone. God, for far too often we, we try to make ourselves great or we try to find other things to be great in our lives. But the truth is, God, we need your greatness to bring us through, to, to take us out. God, to heal our bodies, to renew our minds, to restore relationships, to break the, ba the chains of, of sin in our lives. God, we pray today, Lord, for your greatness to show up the lives of your people, God, in, the, in our community, in our nation, around this world, God, we need you, God, and we know you are able, we know you are working, and so we set our affection upon you, we give you our praise today, God, because you are so worthy of it, God, may you be glorified in our midst. God, well, we're excited that you all are with us today, virtually, as you watch through Facebook. We can lift up the name of the Lord together, even in different locations. And so we praise God's great name today. Amen? Amen. We want to especially thank those of you who may be watching, joining us for the very first time. We are the Sign of the Dove Church here in Waukegan, Illinois, and as we like to say, we're spirit-led and compassion-driven, and when we say that, we don't take that as just the words that we throw out, but it's true. That's how we live our lives together, that God's spirit leads us, and that we demonstrate the compassion that he demonstrated while he was here on earth, and so we thank you again for joining us. If you want to find out more about who we are, you can always visit our website at thesignofdove.org. You can check out past sermons. You can check out our calendar of events. Uh, there's also a way for you to give online. So those of you who have faithfully been continuing to support our ministry, we thank you for that. We praise God that he's continued to supply through your faithfulness and your generosity. Let's continue to close out this year in that same generosity. Amen. So we thank you. Uh, just a couple of announcements to make you aware of. So next Thursday is Thanksgiving. And we know things are a little bit different this year. So what we're going to be doing is, is premiering a, a virtual Thanksgiving service, if you will, on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, that virtual video service will, sh will start on ni at 9 a.m. Central Time. Of course, you can go back and watch it in wh whatever time is convenient for you. But we want to have some time to, to start that morning of thanks by worshiping God and, and hearing from one another and just some encouraging word together. I do want to ask if, if you have just a, a testimony of, of thanks that you'd like to share with the body. We'd love to capture just a short video and share a handful of those as part of that service. So if you would like to do that, we ask that you do that um, and send it to us before Monday night, tomorrow night, just so we have time to prepare. Two minutes or less is plenty, just a short word to share what God has done. You can contact us, again, through Facebook. Uh, or through the website, and we'll give you the details about how to get the actual video clip to us. So praise God for that. And just one other announcement for the ladies, our Just Be Women's Ministry uh, is hosting a, a gift exchange. Now, it, in, the, in the state of this season, it's going to be a little bit different, so they're just asking if you're interested to contact them through Facebook. There's been a couple posts made by Sandy, and you'll see some others uh, where you can just let them know you're interested, 
they'll pair you up with another another woman in the church and then you can give your gift either electronically or you can mail it or drop it off if that works out uh twenty dollar cap on the gift and just a way to to stay connected as ladies and encourage other through this christmas season amen praise god well let me uh step away and i want to pass the mic now to pastor Corey. i know he's got a powerful word for us this morning and so let's get ready to receive the word from the lord amen Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So grateful to be with you this morning. We give God the praise. I just want to give God honor for the worship this morning. Just so powerful. Thank you to my wife, Shani, and to the rest of the team. Um, we just really just glorify God for people that want to lift up the Savior. Hallelujah. There's something awesome when you can get together with others and bless God. When you can get together with others and your heart be encouraged in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I am so excited and so uh, blessed this morning because his presence is here. Hallelujah. His presence is here. Where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, I will be in there in the midst of you. And so I'm grateful this morning. Um, I want to move quickly through this because I know that the Lord has something to speak. The word has already been confirmed several times this week as well as this morning during the worship. And so I want to draw your attention to Romans 8. If you will go with me to Romans 8, we're going to start at verse 18 and talk about the future glory. Amen. So turn to your Bibles, Romans 8, and we're going to go verse 18 all the way through verse 30. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. But the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Hallelujah. That the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corrupt and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those who he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this word today. Lord God, we thank you, Father, that this word will be stirred up inside of us. Let the seeds be planted, that there would be great growth in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for speaking forth today. I decrease that you might increase, Lord God. For I know that you have an assignment, Lord God. For I know that you have people that you want to encourage, Lord God. For I know that there are people whose faith need to arise this morning, oh God. And so, Father, I come in agreement with the Spirit right now that says, rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up and believe again in the name of Jesus. Rise up and stand in the promises of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to title this message today, He Will See You Through. Hallelujah. He will see you through. My God. I'm so encouraged by just that phrase alone, he will see you through. Because it says something that no matter what I'm going through, he's going to bring me out. Hallelujah. But here's the thing. 
and, and we're, gonna, we're not going to be going through any type of a progression of going line by line because I definitely want to preach to you because the backdrop of this has to do with future glory. Hallelujah. The backdrop of this has to do with changing our perspective when we're going through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will see us through. We need to see the bigger picture. Hallelujah. And even today, I don't want to minimize anybody's circumstance. Your circumstance is real. What you are going through is real. The depression is real. The doubt is real. The fear is real. All the sufferings that you're going through, they are real. Hallelujah. But they are not your destiny. My God. Hallelujah. They are not your destiny destiny. And so we want to talk to you today to help you to rise above and see that God has greater plans for you. When you said yes to the Lord, he already made you and enabled you to make it. Hallelujah. He enabled you to come through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So when we look at this in Romans, in the first part of Romans, it talks about this groaning and it talks about this groaning that happens in the earth. And this groaning, this thing called the groaning, has to do with the fact that there is decay and expectancy. There's a rub between the two. There's decay and there's expectancy. We can see in the earth, the created things, that there is decay happening. You know, all the global warming and stuff that people are talking about, what they don't understand is that this is the decay of the earth. But it's also the expectancy of something new. So even the created things realize that something new is coming. The created things recognize it. We can see that in the changing of the seasons, at least us here in the uh, Midwest. We can see that in the changing of the seasons, when the leaves start to come off like they are right now, where it's looking really brittle and dead. But there's an expectancy. Hallelujah. They decay right now, but they know that as soon as the spring comes, as soon as the sunshine comes, they know that they're going to give life again. My God. Woo, Jesus. There's the groanings that's happening. Even the earth recognizes it. Hallelujah. And let me just tell you something. The world, the unbelievers, they recognize that there's a groaning. There's a groaning because of the, there's just the decay. All throughout this summer with all the killings, with all this other stuff that's been going on, people are tired. People are frustrated. There's another word for groaning. It's frustration. Frustration. There's a groaning that's happening amongst the unbeliever. It's a frustration. People are upset. People are afraid. There is a frustration going on, and there's an expectancy of something, but they don't know what. There's an expectancy of something. But see, there's this wrestle that's going on, and it's like, I don't know what, what this is about. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is what it's about, amen? Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the one who died on the cross so that man can be saved, so that groaning can be satisfied in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, then it goes on to talk about there's a groaning inside the believer. Well, Jesus. Hallelujah. I think sometimes we think that once we get saved, that everything is going to be all right. Once we get saved, that it's just going to be cream and, 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 and popsicles and, 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 and just uh, uh, dancing through the lilies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But if, if you have the relationship with Jesus, he lets you know that suffering is a part of the package. My God. He said if you're going to be associated with Christ, you got to be associated with him in his death, his resurrection, and his suffering. Now we don't want to hear all that. Because we don't like to suffer. But he says if you're going to be with me. You're going to have to go through the sufferings. And the Bible says. And he learned obedience through the things he. My God. Through the things he suffered. There's a groaning. There's a groaning in the believer. As the believers have been seeing the very same thing and living this life this summer, 2020, there's been a frustration even in the believer. Even in the believer, there's been a frustration. And it has come to even a point where people are starting to doubt what they first believed. See, I've been going through the book of John with some people I've been ministering to, and praise the Lord, we're almost done. 
and, and you know, this year in going through the book of John, I've had a different understanding of John's writing. And what I came to understand that this whole book was so that we would believe. The whole book was written so that we would believe because there's going to be an issue when it comes to belief as we go through the suffering. As we go through the suffering, it's going to play with the fact that we said yes to God. As we go through the suffering, it's going to play with the fact that we made this commitment to go all the way with him. Hallelujah. See, there's a groaning. There's a groaning in the believer, and that groaning is one that says, you know, I know I'm going through, and I know that I've been promised to be a child of God, but see, the other side of that promise says, there's going to be future glory. There's going to be future glory if you will just persevere, and I love what it says in the scripture on the end of that at verse 25, my God, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Some of your versions might say perseverance, and that's almost a curse word, perseverance. We want to, we want to, per you want me to persevere? I'm tired. Some of you even said that out your mouth this summer. I'm tired. The same thing keeps happening. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. Yep, that's exactly what the Bible said we was going to do. That's the groaning he's talking about. But he said, wait with patience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, wait with patience patience. Now I'm going to tell you there's a reason why he said wait with patience because he is the Lord. He made a promise. See that's the thing about our God. Our God is faithful to his promises. We just said that. There's nobody like our God. We just said it in the scripture in Romans 8 at the end. There's nothing that can take me away from the love of God. He's faithful. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. So if the Lord says wait patiently then do what the Lord says. Wait patiently. I'm going to just mention this real quick. So I'm in John chapter 19, and he's before, uh, Jesus is standing before Pilate, and, and, and they, they, they send him to the cross, and, and they nail him to the cross. And one thing that stood out to me today was that he, uh, the Pilate had wrote on there, here stands the king of the Jews. And, and, and the leaders of the Jews came to Pilate and said, why don't you change it to, he said he was king of the Jews. But Pilate said, I said what I said. And this wasn't a ghetto Bible. This, this wasn't a ghetto version Bible. Pilate said, I said what I said. Hey! So then that means even with what God is saying in the word here, he said, wait patiently. So even through the hardest thing that you're groaning through, and we're all going through some groaning. I mean, we're about to come up against Thanksgiving and some of us won't be able to be with our families. We're going through a hard time. We're going through a pressurous time. But God said, wait patiently. Now let's go on to why. I'm going to tell you why. We have three, let me give you just three things on why we need to hope. Because we need to hope really well. And this is coming from the backdrop of the scripture. Hallelujah. Verse 26 says, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness. Now, he didn't say weakness says. It wasn't plural. Weakness. Because apparently this is a problem in, in us. That we have a tendency to doubt. We have a tendency to want to give up. But God says, wait patiently because I've given you my spirit and my spirit will help you. My God. My God. See, the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. See, that's the thing that I think we forget. We forget that when I'm going through the suffering, there is a Spirit of God within me that is interceding on my behalf. He is praying over my situation. He is praying that I make it. My God. 
Hallelujah. See, that's why we have to wait patiently. The Holy Spirit is interceding for us. We are in very good hands because we don't just have one partner interceding for us. We've got two. The Spirit is the inward partner, and then Jesus is making, he's an advocate before the Father. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. When you're going through, you already got two of the greatest intercessors ever in the history of mankind. See, so, so this is a prayer that happens because when you're going through, you don't know what to pray. When you're going through, when you've got people that are, that are going wayward and you're trying to figure out, God, what am I to do? And l- l- let me just break it down to this. Because even with us, uh, we're so scatterbrained that, that we can't even get quiet for five minutes. That's our weakness. That's our weakness. Uh, That flesh is trying to settle down, but we're just all over the place. And and when we're going through trouble, forget it. That's why some of us just say, look, I can't even do it anymore. I'm I'm tapped out. I I can't even do it anymore. You want to worship? I I, I don't even think worship. What are you talking about? Come and sing? I I don't want to do that. What are you? Come and and pray. What? I don't want to do that. I'm going through. You just don't understand. I've got a lot going on. You just don't understand. You can't comprehend what I'm going through. But God knows. God knows what you're going through, and he will see you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will see you through. So this this should be very freeing. This should be very freeing because even when I don't know what to pray, Dawn, the Holy Spirit knows. So that means I can be myself. I can be myself. God, I'm done. I'm done, God. Just go ahead, God. I'm done. Go ahead, God. Have your way. Because at least you're still sticking with him. You may not know what to pray, but at least you're still sticking with him. You may not know what to call on, but the spirit knows what God knows. Hallelujah. The spirit knows what God knows. And he's going to bring you through. Hallelujah. The spirit helps us. In fact, this is the third groan that it talks about. This is the groaning of the spirit because the spirit is in communion with the father. And so there's a groaning that's going on that we don't even understand. Hallelujah. Because he's going to see you through. You're going to make it. Touch your neighbor and say you're going to make it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Touch your children. Tell them they're going to make it. Hallelujah. I keep telling my second born that, hey. Hallelujah. You're going to make it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got to believe God. So that was number one. The spirit helps us. Number two, the verse that we quote all the time, Romans 8, 28, for God causes all things to come together for good. But let me tell you, I looked that up and it said cooperates. God makes everything cooperate for your good. So all the mess that you're going through, he's working it to make it cooperate together for your good. My God, hallelujah. See, there's a reason to hope because even though this circumstance looks like this, my God is already working to make that thing cooperate for my good. Now, you got to believe him or not? I hope you choose to believe him for your good. Why? He made a promise. He made a promise that if you said yes, you were going to come into the fold and be his child. And so he doesn't leave his child defenseless. He doesn't leave the sheep out there to be uh, to be devoured by the wolves. He does not do that. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. I love the prayers that are that are uh, that are being made by the by the saints of old in the Old Testament because they continually pray his promises. Because I've got to remind myself, and I'm I'm getting ahead. I've got to remind myself of his faithfulness. That's got to be continual. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God makes everything cooperate for our good. Check out Ephesians 1, chapter uh, chapter 1, verse 11. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance And he makes everything work out according to his purpose. He chose you in advance and he's going to make everything work out according to his purpose. So the thing is, when stuff comes my way, I just got to remember he's going to work things out according to his purpose. 
See, some, see, what has happened, when we've gone through these different trials and tribulations, I think we've lost sight of the fact that God is the greater. And so therefore, and, and I know I'm probably repeating what Apostle Deborah said, and I'm probably repeating what Pastor Brent said, probably repeating what Pastor Jason said, but God is the greater. We've made these circumstances to be bigger than God. I, and you know, I guess we're going to be saying this until Jesus comes home. Because we have a tendency to look at our circumstances and make them God. We have a tendency to look at our circumstances and cause them to dictate our moves. When God is telling us to be patient. Why? Because he's working something out. <laughs> That's why we need community. Because the community is going to surround us to help us stay in that vein. Because if we don't stay in that vein, we're going we're gonna to go off on our own and start trying to make something else happen and cause a deeper problem. Been there, done that. But we got to stay with him. We've got to stay with him. He's going to make all things cooperate. Hallelujah, I love that. <laughs> He's going to make all things cooperate for our good. Number three, this is another reason why you should hope. The first one, because the Spirit is interceding for us. The second one is because God makes everything cooperate. And now the third one, hallelujah, because it is his eternal purpose to save us. It is his eternal purpose to save us. See, we have to believe that at the end of this, God has, God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. He said, it is done. You know, he lived a life of purpose and went through every single trial that he went through and it was for purpose. And so when he got to the end, he said, it's finished. Now I'm going to go take my seat. My seat of glory. I'm going to get back to that place with my father. We have to be able to live a life of purpose and persevere. Because his promises are yea and amen. We've got to believe his promises. Okay, so what am I to do with all this? <laughs> Praise God. What am I to do with all this? Praise God. I, and a couple of days ago, God gave me this, and I felt like Pastor Jason because he, he loves to play on words and stuff. But uh, and, and that's, that's his gift. He's good at it. Praise the Lord. So pray real prayers. Praise the Lord. Pray real prayers. Okay? That doesn't mean the other prayers are fake. That doesn't mean that. But we're going to deal with the word real. Hallelujah. Pray real prayers. Letter R. Remind yourself of the Lord's promises. Because if you don't remind yourself of his promises, you will lose sight that I'm going to make it. So I've got to pray the promises of God. Hallelujah. I am certain that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27. Hallelujah. Now you can write that down. Psalm 27, verse 13 and 14. I am going to see his goodness. I'm going to see it. So no matter what's going on, I'm going to see it. And see, and it changes the way we pray. We got to pray the faithful promises of God. That was letter R. Hallelujah. Letter E for evaluate. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself to see if you're still in the faith. See, we're not even taking time to examine where we are. Because sometimes we are living this life and going through things and we haven't realized how far we've strayed. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a fine line. These things that we go through. Because sometimes when we go through stuff, we start trying to do things on our own. And as we try and start working it out on our own, we've drifted from trust. Why? Because we can handle it. And we've drifted. But the Bible tells us we need to evaluate where we are. Make that evaluation every single day. That's why you need to be in the Word of God every single day. Every single day. Letting the Word of God 
deal with you. Hallelujah. Evaluate. Evaluate yourself. Hallelujah. Psalm 139. Search me, O God. That's got to be our plan every single day. God, search me. See if there's any wayward thing within me. Search me, Lord, because I want to stay faithful to you. Search me out, God, that I may stay faithful with you. So that was the letter E. Letter A, align yourself with his promises. See, we had a word before this pandemic through uh, Mike Gonzalez. It was alignment. Do y'all remember that? Mike Gonzalez had, had come up here and gave us that word about we need to have an alignment, okay? Well, see, that alignment, that alignment is a surrendering, okay? Your car can't go nowhere if it's hoist up on the little thing. Your car can't go nowhere. Your car is in surrender. Even if you turn the motor, it's not going anywhere. The wheels aren't touching any ground to go anywhere. It's hoisted up. It sounds like Romans 12. I'm a living sacrifice. I'm bound up in the way of the Lord. I can't go nowhere but wherever he takes me. We got to align ourselves in him. And that comes through surrender. Paul talked about I buffet my flesh. Hallelujah. And so that means we got to do those things that cause us to surrender. That's why we got to do some fasting. If ever there was a time that there needed to be fasting, it's now. So that we can align ourselves with what God is saying. That's 1 Corinthians 9, 27, where he says, I buffet my flesh. Hallelujah. And then the last letter of real is L, love. Hallelujah. Love is not just this worship place, but love is this act of obedience. My God. When God is speaking, we have to be people that act in obedience. Obedience. See, here's the thing. The promise that he made, God's word is true. If you will abide in me, I will abide in you. Praise the Lord. I, I, don't, I don't know how you can even work that any other way. It's very simple. Abide in me and I will abide in you. Keep my commandments and I will abide in you. And you, look at this, will abide in my love. We got to pray real prayers. We got to pray real prayers. The thing that I love about this whole process, hallelujah, is that God says, I called you. And I called you to this promise that's on the end. But not only that, I'm in the middle of it all. Hallelujah. I love this because none of this is, is me. This, this is all God's doing. I responded to his, 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 his loving kindness that brought me forth. And now he's saying, now I'm going to show you my grace in the midst of all this while you are being conformed to the image of Christ. See, that's the point. That's the point. All the suffering, all the trials and everything. He is conforming us to the image of Christ. So we can't give up. There's a song, praise the Lord, that I wanted to close with. We can't give up. We cannot give up. Evan, I want you to open this up for me, praise the Lord. We cannot give up. We cannot give up. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. When I heard this song, I, I was like, my goodness, it's right in line with what, God, you're calling for us to do. Oh, praise the Lord. You hold it all together. See, our perspective has to change. We have to realize, hallelujah, we have to realize in whom we believe. Through all the pressures, through all the disappointments, through all the failures, God is still in the midst. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to transition to the other keyboard. <laughs> Praise God. We have to recognize that he is still in the midst of all. He's in the midst of all of it. Hallelujah. He's still working for our good. He's still working from his promise of eternal life. 
he is still working from his promise of he will be our God and we will be his people. He's the one who called you. He's the one who began this work. He has given us his spirit as a guarantee. He will see it to completion. He's the one that holds it all together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident that I, as seasons change, your faithfulness remains. And I believe, here we go. And I believe that I will see the goodness, the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident. Faithfulness.
I want to encourage you this morning. The Lord holds it all together. And those of you that want this song, it's by Maverick City called You Hold It All Together. Because we got to get to this place where we remind ourselves, we got to pray real prayers. We got to remind ourselves, we got to evaluate, we got to align, we've got to love. We got to be continually reminding ourselves that He's still faithful. That the promise He made when I said yes to Jesus, He will fulfill it. I am a son. The spirit of adoption, I am a son. Hallelujah. There's an inheritance for me. And I need to press forward. I need to be a good soldier. I need to be a good athlete and endure. The race is not given to the swift. The race is not given to the strong, but to the one who endures until the end. You hold it all together. So, Father, I pray blessings over the body of Christ today. Father, for those that are going through, Lord God, I thank you that you're already making intercession for them. Father, in fact, you've been making intercession. Father, you've always been working. And so, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would come to this place and align ourselves with your will. Just like Jesus did in the midst of the garden, he aligned himself with your will. Father, I pray that we would get back to the garden and do that. Align ourselves with your will. We need to have a garden experience with you, God. Where we can align ourselves with your will. Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. Let your will be done in me, oh God. I place my trust in you. You hold it all together. You're the one that's writing this story, oh God. It's your eternal promise to save us. Thank you for working in our hearts today. Father, I pray for those that are on the border, on the edges. Lord God, may your loving kindness, Lord God, just draw them in. May your loving kindness, Lord God, just continue to draw them. Father, extend more grace. Extend more grace. Extend more grace, oh God. Extend more grace. Extend more grace, God, that we can come near, Lord God. Father, it's all because of your love. Father, I pray that we would say yes to you. And believe you that you will see us through. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you need prayer, if you need anything like that, please drop us a message, put something in the chat, or you can email us at info at the sign of the or maybe you can have information where you can contact one of our ministers, or contact a faithful friend that has a relationship with God, because we need to be in prayer. We need to be in prayer to have that expectation, to have that different vantage point. Send a text, let somebody know, I need prayer because my faith is waning. God is faithful. Thank you for joining us. This is the sign of the dove.
alive with the overflow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo! You hold it all together. Hey, stay in the fight. Don't give up. Don't give up. The Lord will see you through. Yeah. You hold it all together. He's writing the story. pressure and stress, cry out to the Lord and remind him, I am your child. Hallelujah. And I believe and know that you are going to lead me through this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Hallelujah. And may that be in you, and may you encourage others. That's the beauty of the body of Christ. There is one faithful message. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Hallelujah. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. I thank you for today.